A few years ago, na uso tong meme na to. What's wrong with the grammar sa meme na yan? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there! Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. This is part of our Wordy Wednesday series in which I try to give you at least one new English lesson every Wednesday. Today we're going to talk about another error na laging lumalabas sa sentence correction questions at hindi napapansin which is yung double negatives. Last time we talked about the redundancy error and if you haven't seen that video yet, click right here so you can catch up. Today, this is another topic na hindi pansinin pero laging lumalabas kaya kailangan ninyong malaman. And in order for me to explain better, I'm going to switch over to my PC so I can show you. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so ito yung lesson natin sa double negatives. And if you're familiar with this, I really hope makatulong ito sa exam, lalo na sa sentence correction. Now, a classic example of a question that you may encounter sa inyong exam would be something like this. So, uh, again, sentence correction part. So, kailangan nyo malaman kung aling part dyan yung may error. And uh, it says, why do you keep complaining? You don't have no problems. And then you have the option to choose kung no error siya. Now, most people would um, usually go to either the tense or yung uh, subject verb agreement pagdating sa ganito klaseng tanong. Uh, hindi nila napapansin yung certain errors like yung uh, redundancy error that I explained um, a few weeks back. And uh, pati na rin itong double negatives. So, um, ano ba ang mali dyan? Now, ano ba ang concept muna ng double negatives? Ang concept nito is much like math. When we talk about integers, if you remember, negative times negative is positive. Ano ibig sabihin nun? If you are putting two negatives together, ang magiging effect niya is positive. In bis na marati niya yung pagiging negative niya, pag binultiply mo sila, magiging positive na sila. And uh, when it comes to language, parang ganun din. So, babalikan natin yung example natin. There's a line there that says, you don't have no problems. Okay? Now, ano yung double negative dyan? Now, yung first is yung don't. Kasi ang don't means do not. So, may una ka ng not. May negative ka na na part. Yun yung una mong negative. Now, hindi pa doon natapos kasi may isa pa, which is yung no. Kasi ang no, ibig sabihin wala. So, that's another negative which turns the statement positive. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag sinabi ko na uh, wala ka namang walang problema or hindi ka naman walang problema, ang ibig sabihin na nun is may problema ka. Okay? Kasi kung hindi ka walang problema, ibig sabihin meron ka. Meron kang problema. Hindi wala. Now, um, bakit ito problematic for us Filipinos? Kasi again, hindi uncommon sa language natin to use double negatives. So, for example, you can say something like, hindi ka naman walang ginagawa. Kasi hindi natin napapasin minsan. Um, when it comes to the English language, nagagawa or na-apply din natin yung concept na yun. So, um, anong gagawin natin dapat dyan? You can either revise um, one of the parts or revise the entire statement. So, in this case, okay, kung ang katanong would, would be, what do you really want to say? Ano ba gusto mo sabihin? Na wala siyang problema or na meron siyang problema? Kasi kung ang gusto mo sabihin ay wala siyang problema, what you could do would be to keep this negative, tatanggalin mo yung isang part sa kanila. So, either you say you do have pro you do have no problems, or better, you don't have any problems. Okay? Kasi that way, yung don't, siya na lang yung mag-iisang negative, and the statement remains negative. Okay? Or sabihin mo na lang, you have no problems. Okay? Again, that would mean wala, ka, wala siyang problema. So either you say, you don't have any problems, which means wala kang problema, or you have no problems, or wala kang problema. Okay? Pareho lang yun. So again, um, pagdating sa exam, nakakita kayo ng isang negative na, make sure na wala ng ibang negative dun sa sentence na yun. Now, which means itong sentence natin right here, ang error niya would be C. Dapat, like I said, you don't have any problems or you have no problems. Now, ano yung mga clues natin? Let's talk about this example. Sabi, there weren't none of my allies in the room where it happened. So, again, to spot kung ano yung mga negatives dyan, a good clue would be what we call negative word clues. Ang negative word clues natin, some examples would be no, nobody, nothing, not, none, 
won't or wouldn't kasi ang won't would be will not yeah another translation yan ang wouldn't is would not and then we have don't or didn't which means do not or did not can't or couldn't which means cannot or could not isn't which me which means is not or aren't which means are not wasn't was not and yung weren't or were not. So again, if you notice, ang common theme dyan would be yung not na word. Okay? And then, of course, marami pang iba. So how do you know that they are negative word clues? Kung merong no sa part niya. So no, nobody, nothing, not, none. Ito yung mga clues natin. Now, if there are negative word clues, ibig sabihin, again, in order for the statement to remain negative, dapat wala ng ibang negative word. Okay, na magpapapalit nung ibig sabihin nung negative word clue. So in this case, sabi there weren't none of my allies in the room where it happened. So yung weren't already means were not. And then you have none pa. So ibig sabihin nun, negative to, negative pa yan. So sa Tagalog, para sinabi mo na, walang wala akong mga allies in the room where it happened. Okay? So again, bakit din siya complicated or bakit siya hindi ma-detect sa Philippine language? Kasi nga, again, yung walang wala sa atin is an emphasis. It places emphasis dun sa fact na wala talaga. Pero sa English kasi hindi pwedeng redundant, hindi pwedeng double negative. So what do we do? Okay, may revise tayo. We will strike out, we can strike out weren't, kasi yung were not, none. Magiging double negative siya. You can turn this into where instead. So there were none of my allies in the room where it happened. Now, you can also say there weren't any of my allies in the room where it happened. You have two options, actually. So, again, you can either say there were none or there weren't any of my allies in the room where it happened. One of the negatives should go. It's either you change weren't or you change none. Okay? So, study yung negative word clues and make sure that you spot them pagdating sa exam. Now, another clue would be some, th- something that deals with this sentence right here. Sabi sa sentence, it wasn't uncommon f- to find kids playing in the streets. Now, yung wasn't, na usapan na natin, negative na rin yan. There's another negative part there na ang clue would be yung negative prefixes natin. Ano ba ibig ng prefixes? Prefixes are parts ng word na nagsisimu- sa simula. Okay, kaya pre, di ba prehistory, anything pre is before. So, ibig sabihin, prefixes are parts of the word na nasa simula. Now, ano yon? We have none, un, miss. Now, itong mga ito, pati our ear, okay? And these will change the meaning of the word. Okay? So, for example, kagaya ng im, possible. Okay? Yung dating possible, pag nilagay mo ng im, it means not possible. So, to translate, yung ating it wasn't uncommon, ang ibig sabihin na yan is it was not not common. So again, nakita mo yung dalawang not na yon, Problematic yun. So, anong gagawin natin? Okay? Now, dete- meron pang ibang negative prefixes. I just wanted to emphasize that. I, um, ano lang to? These are samples. So, when you see prefixes sa word, um, tanongin nyo sa yun nyo kung ibig sabihin ba nun ay negative. So again, it was not not, not uncommon. Eh, it was not not common. So, you have to choose to keep just one of them. You can either say it wasn't common or, kung gusto mo, tanggalin mo na lang yung prefix, which is un. So, it wasn't common to find kids playing in the streets. Kasi ang gusto niya sabihin, kung negative ang statement na gusto niya sabihin is, hindi, uh, bihira, okay? hindi madalas na may mga kids playing in the streets. So, you can either say, it was uncommon to find kids playing in the streets, or it wasn't common to find kids playing in the streets. Just to keep the sentence negative. Okay? Now, what else yung mga clue natin pagdating sa double negatives. We have this. This is the part na I feel not a lot of people are aware of. So sa exam, dito pinakadelikado. Kasi yung mga negative word clues natin, yung negative prefixes natin, marami sa atin ang familiar na with that. Okay, so when we see the word not or none, medyo madali natin ma-detect yon. Yung un or im, madali natin i-detect yon. Ito yung hindi masyado madaling i-detect, which is yung negative adverb. Okay? So, negative adverbs, sam- some samples are barely, rarely, seldom, hardly, and scarcely. Okay? So, itong mga to, adverbs sila, ibig sabihin, they modify the verb. Okay? Um, they change the meaning. And uh, sa Tagalog, ang barely, ibig sabihin, um, again, bihira, or halos hindi. 
Okay? So, hindi na siya. Rarely, bihira, halos hindi. Seldom, minsan, or halos hindi. So, again, yung halos hindi na yun, yung first hindi is not. Okay? Parang ang sinasabi mo is not always. Okay? Hardly, ganun din, not always. Scarcely, ganun din, not always. So, yung not always, yung unang not na yun is already a negative. So in this case, sabi, he hardly had nothing to do with that fiasco. Now, we already know that nothing is a negative word, okay? Tapos meron ka pang hardly. So sa Tagalog, ang ibig sabihin na niya, okay, bihira or he hindi madalas had wala to do with that fiasco. Dalawa na. Or sa English, he not always had nothing to do. So may not always ka na, may nothing ka pa. So you have to change things up. So yung nothing, you can turn that into anything, or you can just remove hardly. So, dalawa yung options mo. Pwede mo sabihin na he hardly had anything to do with it or ha- hardly had anything to do with that fiasco or he had nothing to do with that fiasco. So, again, two options. You can either strike down the adverb or you can change in nothing into anything. So, what do we do? Again, be familiar with these negative adverbs. There may be more. So, lagi nyo iisipin, itong mga e, yung li, e, e, words na to, anong ibig sabihin niya? Does it turn the sentence negative? Okay? Now, let's do a quick quiz on double negatives. I have three statements, and ang gagawin niyo would be i-revise niyo siya. Subukan niyo siyang i-revise. So, I'll give you three minutes for this exercise, and then at the end, I'm going to explain ko rin tamang sagot. Alright? If you're ready... Your timer starts now. All right, so let's see how you did. So Sabi, the first one, the, se- the exercise didn't do her no good. Second one says, it seemed like she was not uninspired. And then your third, it says, she scarcely didn't visit the gym. So, isaysayin lang natin siya. Yung first sentence right here, sabi, the exercise did not do her no good. So again, yung not ng didn't, and then yung no na here, double negative na siya, dalawa na yung no. So what can you do? Actually, the quickest way to revise this would be to just remove no. So pwede man sabi the exercise didn't do her good. Or you can change no into any. The exercise didn't do her any good, like what we did kanina, does anything. Or you can just strike down yung not dito sa didn't. So the exercise did do her no good. Pero ang pinaka-basic talaga or pinaka-simple and we always stick to what's simple pagdating sa language is just to strike down the no. Pwede mo na lang sabihin, the exercise didn't do her good. Second sentence, it says, it seemed like she was not uninspired. So, uh, may not ka na, may uninspired ka pa. So, ang gagawin natin would be to strike down 
one of those things. Either tanggalin yung not or tanggalin yung on. So what you could do would be just remove the not. So you could just say, it seemed like she was uninspired. Okay? So it seemed like she was not inspired. Kasi kung not uninspired, ibig sabihin na not, not inspired, ibig sabihin inspired na siya. Okay? Eh di ba nga, wala nga nangyari sa kanya doon sa gym. Now, your third statement says uh, she scarcely didn't visit the gym. So, itong scarcely, bihira, or not always. So, she not always did not vi- visit the gym. So, again, we can change either of those things. Okay? You can remove scarcely or change didn't. So, what you could do would be strike down didn't visit and turn it into visited the gym. So, for example, parang sinabi mo, diba, um, bihira siyang dumalaw sa gym. So, she scarcely visited the gym. Or, like I said, pwede mong just remove scarcely so she didn't visit the gym. Kaya lang, kung ang layunin mo is to say na bihira siyang mag-gym, so, kasi mas maganda yun kesa dun sa um, tanggalin mo yung scarcely. Kasi pag, sinabi mo, pag tanggal mo yung scarcely, hindi sabihin na she didn't visit the gym. Hindi sabihin, hindi talaga siya pumunta sa gym. Eh, kung ang gusto mo ipahiwati ay bihira lang siya pumunta, Naka, nakarating naman siya, alam nyo yun, yung kaibigan natin minsan na nag-enroll sa gym tapos magpapamember, tapos isang isang beses lang or isang or tatlong beses lang pupunta tapos next week tamad na uli. Parang ganoon yung gusto mo payuhatig. So hindi naman literal na hindi siya talaga pumunta sa gym, bihira lang. Then you can change it this way. So she scarcely visited the gym. So bihira siya ang dumalaw sa gym. Okay? So I hope you got those right. Again, there are many ways to change those up. Ang importante, alam niyo na may mali do sa sentence na 'yon. All right? Alright, hope you learned something new today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Lalo na kung mag-exam din sila para mas maraming tayong matulungan. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell icon para wala kayong mamiss. There are more videos coming up and I would love to have you guys with us dito sa team. Don't forget to post a comment din sa baba kung meron kayong mga requests. And uh, I would love to hear from you para lang maipila ko sa mga videos na gagawin ko rin in the future. And if you want to reach out to me directly, if you want a copy of the reviews that I make or attend one of the upcoming live review events or yung at- join yung online review program, you can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlika for more information. Thanks guys for watching. As always, never stop learning. Adja adja, kaya niyan. I'll see you in my next video and bye for now.